Periscope bro. How's everybody doing? What's up, Periscope? Happy Father's Day to every man. Happy Mother's Day 2017 to the rest of you mothers. But it's for fathers. How's everybody doing? Can everybody hear me clearly? Listen, y'all got me on a Sunday, so let's talk about it quickly. Good to see everybody. Thank you guys for all the well wishes. I don't think I've ever gotten this many Father's Day wishes ever in my life. So thank you. You guys are beautiful, kind. I got text messages, Facebook messages, and oh, wow, across the board. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, each and I'm serious. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Been, thank you. So, <coughs> how's everybody doing? You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Look at all those happy Father's Day. Y'all know it's amazing that it's Father's Day. Can y'all tell me why every year for Father's Day my kids end up getting more stuff than me? Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Help me. Help me. I say I can't wait till y'all get older. It's the funniest thing. <laughs> I, I end up going out to the stores, ladies and gentlemen, and they call themselves going with me and I end up buying them stuff. It'd be so funny. It happens every year. I took them to the boys. I wouldn't let them buy me anything yesterday, and I'm down there buying them anything they want. That's crazy, guys. That is so funny. <laughs> they, I, I wouldn't bought them a pool, you know, because I'm going to build a house next year, and I bought them a pool so they can get in the water. So they're out there in the water. It's crazy. I mean, um, did I get another tie? Yes, I got plenty. Yes, yeah, about the kids. I, I got plenty of ties. I didn't even need ties. I got a bo- I got uh, I got a lot of stuff, guys. That's what I'm building my house next year. Uh, but yeah, I got a couple ties and this and that, and so y'all yeah, pray for my son. Uh, my son needs Jesus. Uh, but yeah, it's the joy of being a father. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. God bless you, my friend. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I, I I feel this way, and I feel this way strongly. I feel that my life is a failure if my if my kids are failures. I feel that way. My life is not about me. It's about my kids and my family. And I will be a failure if my kids are raised to be failures. I feel like now my father set the tone for me to be a, a great man of God. I need to follow. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I need to follow in his footsteps. Then my son needs to be able to stand on my shoulders to see father and do better than I am or be a better man than I am. But I need to set the tone and make it hard for him make it hard for him where he had something to strive and reach for that he can reach okay and i believe that i want my son to be better than me so that's why i'm talking about this today i want to say something to you um again first time as if you're on for the first time type of one and i'll tell you what i'm talking about today i've been reading some for the last three days and i want to share some insight i'm not going to be long because it's going to take me a little while to go through everything Thank you for first timers for being on the rest of you. If you don't know how to share, you can share. No Facebook Live, just in, um, just Periscope tonight because I started with Periscope, started from the bottom. Now we're here, and I'm riding with Periscope. Newcomers, bless you. Thank you for coming in again. Android, swipe up, hit share. Face, uh, what is it? It's not Facebook. Uh, iOS operators, left to right. Again, you can hit share. Some of you share it to Facebook, share it to Twitter. I do actually go back and look at my Twitter messages as well. If you get locked out of the room, if you want to talk to me on on Twitter, all you have to do is hit share to Twitter. If you're locked out of the room, type in a comment. It goes straight to my wall. I'm trying to teach y'all some Periscope tricks. If you want to go and do a screenshot, swipe your phone like you do a regular screenshot, you will get my picture. But don't y'all be using my picture on fake profiles. I'm going to get you. Don't do that. A couple people know me these days, so don't, don't do that. All right? Don't be... Putting y'all, don't be putting my picture in y'all phone. Hey, Angela, talking about this is my new boo. No, don't y'all be doing it now. I need y'all to stop those shenanigans now. Y'all be surprised. Talking about you need cute. Oh, somebody going to look in your phone and say, that look like Pastor D. That is Pastor D. Don't y'all do that. Y'all saw all these fake profiles going up. So let's talk about it. importance of selection. The importance of selection. The the importance of selection and the importance of selection, I guess, as far as a godly mate. I'm not going to be long, I promise you, um, because I'm going to do this. One of my scopes I'm going to do, I'm going to show you biblical dating, 
and biblical principles versus worldly principles as far as dating and, and being with a mate. I'm going to show you what the world expects and I'm going to show you what the Bible expects. I'm just going to share some insights to a lot of things that I say to you. But this one here is just kind of impromptu of, of some of the things I want to share on tonight. Again, I'm Pastor D. I'm the Unity Worship Center. I'm Senior Pastor, Founder. Again, Happy Father's Day. I'm Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. Go to UnityWC.com. Register. Real Talk Kim is coming here July 15th. You should be in the place. But check me out. Check me out. I want to talk about this quickly, okay? All right. Christian marriages and choosing a mate. It is very important uh, of how you choose a mate. The second most major decision that you're going to ever make is choosing a mate. Um, I missed that question, my friend. It's choosing a mate and being with the right person. Obviously, the first one um, is going to be accepting Christ as your Lord and personal Savior for salvation. The second most major and critical decision is choosing a mate. I want to say something out of the gate, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all need to understand. If you go to 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, it's a beautiful definition of real love. I can't read it all. It's so long. But it starts this way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Read the word. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffered, suffered long and is kind. Charity envied not. Charity valued not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Think it no evil. Charity. You know charity means love. Most of y'all been to Sunday School 101. It means love, but it's a good definition. Go through it. First Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. It's a great model definition of what real love is. Most of us on here today can testify that because of some of the choices that you made, because of some of the choices that you did or, 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 or did yourself in your own life, you made some bad choices. Yes, you did. Ladies, men, you 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 was with, you were with this guy because of whatever reason you like this guy for this you dated this guy for this come on let's be real on here most people are real on my scope and so what you need to understand something ladies and gents is this men's emotional or, or men's emotional or emotions are not a reliable gauge okay when it comes to establishing something in a marriage relationship you need to understand emotions will get you out of whack hello my friend somebody say hey dad emotions will get me out of get you out of what emotions will mess you up if you do stuff in your feelings um you're gonna always be at a point in your life where you're gonna always regret a lot of things that you do okay and i kid you not yes she asked how can you forget you just got to ask god to give you strength enough to move on and first of all learn how to forgive yourself hear this clearly ladies and gentlemen you must know now watch this y'all in the spirit it is god's will but it is much better to marry for character than emotion let me back that thing up. Y'all missed what I just said. <clears throat> okay. It is better to marry for character and not emotional. Y'all might want to tag yourself on the wall and hear me clearly when I say that again. You should never be with someone because you are emotional. Emotions will say, he is my first love. She's my first love. I'm going to stick this out. This is the first person, let's be real about it, that I've ever had sex with. And I slept with him. I got a kid by this person. And now you are emotion or emotional. And see, you don't understand. You need to marry for character and not emotions. Watch this, y'all. You go to real talk moment of the day. I want to bless you when I tell you this. Emotions fluctuate. Characters don't. Uh-oh. Emotions fluctuate. Character does not. Mm. Character says a whole lot about who this person really is instead of your emotions. Because let me help you ladies and tell you this now. You got some of these effeminate men. They will cry on your shoulder, boo, and tell you they love you. And they will get you so in your emotion. You're going to say, oh, he cried. Oh, he had a tear. Oh, I saw him do it, Pastor D. Yes, I did. And see, emotions will mess you up, ladies, because you are emotional. Again, emotions fluctuate. Character does not. 
See, character is going to show you who this person really is. And I promise you, you can never choose the right person. And I'm going somewhere with this. You say, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtain a favor from God. I understand you know word of God, and I know you get that. But let me help you ladies. The word of God never tells you somewhere, nowhere, anywhere in scripture that you don't have a choice to say yes. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, boom, boom. Say, shake the room. Did y'all hear what I just said? The word of God never tells you that you don't have a choice in the matter. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That you don't have a choice in the matter. You got to understand, ladies. He can walk up to you. I don't care who he is. Boo, he can. He, listen, he can speak in 16 native tongues. I'm talking about he can speak in tongues so good. I promise the hell will raise up on your head. I promise your wig will jump off your head. He can do it any. And I assure you there are some men that can. But now he walks up to you, and I want to tell you, ladies, there are a lot of men that are going to walk up to you because you have a spiritual relationship with God, and you're going to say, hey, you know, he's going to come to the under you or to you in the modicum of this way. He's going to say, hey, God told me, did y'all catch me? Quotation, God told me that you was going to be my wife. Did y'all hear me? God said. Well, boo, I be praying too. I ain't seen God. I don't even know you. <laughs> I just say, I, let me tell you something, boo. Just because I like your picture on Instagram don't mean I want you. Just because I like your picture on Facebook don't mean I want you. Just because I said you look cute and that was a nice you know, get up that you had on. All I really was saying is you look better than what you had on for Easter Sunday when you wore that pastel color suit. That's all I really was trying to tell you. I wasn't trying to. Get, oh, see, y'all not saying nothing. And see, that's what men would do, ladies. I promise you. They'll try to get you in your emotions. And when you get in your emotions, you'll go so far in your emotions. You'll talk yourself into a relationship that never should exist because emotions fluctuate. They will change. You'll be happy. You'll be sad. Just like scripturally. Some days you're happy. Some days you're not. Some days you think God's going to do it. Other days you don't think he is because emotions fluctuate. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this, y'all. Because emotions are in the soulish realms, okay? And unless the carnal man has been renewed, Satan can give us emotions, a feeling of love for someone of his choosing. Let me back it up because I'm about to tell y'all something. Satan can give us emotions or feelings of love for someone of his choosing. Thank y'all for following me because I'm going to bless y'all and tell y'all this. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The word of God tells you in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Y'all read Bible before. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Boom. Boom. Colon, colon, which means, hold up, that ain't it, because I got to tell y'all something else. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? This is the word of God, all right? And then he says, question mark, why are you hanging around unrighteousness? And then he says, what communion does the light have with darkness, ladies and gentlemen? Question mark. So now, here it is, great decisions start when you are with the man or with the woman that loves God. If they don't love God, if they have no relationship with God, then there should be no consideration for this person. Plain and simple. See that you have nothing in common. Well, Pastor D, he got saved yesterday. Boo, that ain't good enough. He needs to be. He need. And this ain't a word. He need to be saved other than you. He he need to be a little more spiritual, in time, inclined, and spiritually mature than you. Pastor D, he just he just went to church with me yesterday. We was been dating for him. Boo, it ain't time for y'all to be talking about getting married. Okay, y'all need to understand. Sometimes now it took you ten years to stop. Okay, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna see, I'm gonna say it. It took you ten years to stop sleeping around. Boo. So how you think this man got everything rushed and purged out of him in two days? How do you think this man got delivered in a week? How do you think this man come on? And so y'all need to understand, ladies, you better stop getting in your emotions because you don't want to be the bridesmaid. You want to be the bride. And then you make a mistake and walk down the aisle with, with somebody that is not purpose for your destiny. Because let me give y'all a shout, ladies and gentlemen. If you go back to Genesis 1, 2, 3, when he talks about Adam and Eve, catch the shout. It's very simple. Y'all miss simple things. God chose Adam's wife. Uh-oh. I'm going to let that marinate for about a second, see if y'all catch it. I don't know if y'all really caught call what I just said. Uh, God chose the wife. Uh, yeah, uh, he even chose his own wife. God did it. Did y'all catch me? He didn't even choose his own spouse. And that's the problem. Sometimes you get so emotional and get in your feelings, you'll start talking to yourself into something that God has already talked you out of. And see, if something on the inside 
<coughs> of you where it feels like God is silent and God is not responding like you think he should be responding, then that's your answer. I get this question all the time. Pastor D, I don't feel like this is the one for me because God appears silent. Boo, he's silent because he ain't got nothing to say. What, what, you want him to give you some positive um, inflection in his voice? You want him to go strike the, you know, lighten it down? You want him to open the heavens and you want him to come down with a choir and a mass choir? Talking about, a, no. And God's silent because he's already given you his answer. And a lot of times, like my father would tell me, rest in peace, Dad. I know you hear me right now. Dad would always say, D, why are you praying for something that you already know God has already given you the answer to? I know you don't like that. Why are you praying? You already know this man is not for you, ladies. Me, you already know she fine. She can't spell her name. She don't even know Jesus. She don't know. She can't even spell Jesus. She spelled her name J E S S E. And you sit there saying, "Well, she cute." Okay, whatever. All right. And you know this man don't love God. He just love your curves. And you trying to put yourself in a situation. And when you do that, ladies and gentlemen, what you do now, you are held to the consequences of your actions. And what you start to do now, you try to make God invalidate who he is in his word. And you try to make God not be sovereign enough to tell you no. Or you try to take God and you try to make God not omniscient or omnipotent. And not you try to take his power from him. And that's what you don't understand. When you do your own thing, you remove yourself from the power. Okay. The anointing, the covering that God has for you. He sits there and look at you and say, yeah, you got grace, but you're going to be held to the consequences of your actions because now you dated the wrong man. You slept with the wrong man. You had a baby by the wrong man. Now you bound yourself to this man for the rest of your life and you upset because he was a deadbeat when you slept with him. But you were so emotional, so emotional. Are y'all hearing me? So emotional. And you thought, okay, I'm going to have a kid. Don't y'all get quiet on me now. I know, okay, I'm going to do this. Oh, it's going to work out. Everybody told you he was crazy and he was no good, but you tried to make it work. You can't do that, ladies and gents, okay? And that's what you have to understand. I'm trying to get y'all to the point of your life where you understand the purpose and the positivity of selection, okay? It never puts you in a place, ladies, where if this man says God has given you or giving you to him, and he says he's that finding a wife. Let me tell you, ladies, I want to bless you. You should be so prayed up that if any joker walks into your face, I believe you should know if he's truthful. How many of y'all? Let's park your parenthetic. Let me ask you a question. How many of you on here, ladies, that can say, Pastor D, I heard that before. How many preachers, moonlighting preachers, done went through town and told y'all you was his wife? How many preachers, how many men of God done say, come on, ladies, now, that say, oh, God done told me you my wife? Y'all have heard it. Y'all have heard it. God's cover girl, my friend, beautiful lady. I know she done heard it a thousand times. And she'd be looking like, whatever. I know you done heard it. I know you ladies. Yes, I know it. And y'all, I, y'all probably get tired of it. Man, get out of my inbox. <laughs> Golly. Man, come on, man, look. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And see, yeah, that's my friend. She said she's always like bad boys. And it happens. Angela, you a minister, a preacher. You see what I'm saying? And see, I know it. And then let me help you, ladies. I want to say this power of selection is very, very great. Don't you let those emotional anointed moments trick your mind. Mm. What you talking about, Pastor D? Let me tell you this. I'm a pastor. I ain't the worst looking pastor on the planet. I ain't blind. So I ain't even finna lie to y'all. All right. Whatever. Y'all like bad looking yourselves. OK. Don't, OK. But hear me clearly. I go preach plenty of places. I'm in front of people. God moves. Hear me clearly. Y'all are too. God moves. God speaks. And see, we'll take those emotional moments and those anointed moments, those ecclesiastical moments, those mountaintop high moments. And what it'll do now, ladies and gentlemen, the anointing that God had placed on you and put on you is attractive. Can I back that thing up again? All right. Told you, Lisa. I see you. It happens. A lot of times, ladies, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to bless y'all. Power selection is very, very, very vital to your life. I ain't going to lie to you, ladies. I, them girls go do whatever they want to do in the street. But when I saw a pretty lady praising Jesus Christ, I was sitting there like, Lord Jesus. Ooh, girl, shout. Ah, hey. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all know it's the truth. Ooh, she pretty. And she, ooh, ooh. Yeah. See, y'all don't see. Y'all doing the wrong thing. 
See, a godly man, he wants a woman that can mess up her makeup every now and then. Y'all not saying, no, 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 no. He don't want you cute all the time. A real godly man, especially a man that's anointed that got a call on his night. Oh, that's right. She pretty and she can pray. What? What? She pretty and she can see. And see, you'll get those emotional moments. I'm serious, ladies and gentlemen. And you've seen them. Yeah. Pretty with power. Yes. Yes, my friend. Pretty praiser. Yes. Yes. And you see that Angela pretty and then Angela is my friend, y'all. Angela ain't trying to get you no date, but I'm just talking. I'm just saying. And then you wrote a book. She's smart. And she anointed. Hear me clearly. And then you'll start to see the anointing over their life. And I promise you, ladies, what will happen with some of you. Hear me clearly, because some of y'all finna throw you wig. I've had friends, and I've seen this for myself. One of my good friends did not like this man that she was dating for the longest. She wouldn't even go out with him. She saw how much that boy loved God. She saw how much that boy put God before her. When she turned down his advancements, he never left the church. He stayed there. He became a minister. I talked to her a couple of years after. She said, I don't know what happened. She said, I'm feeling over this boy because he loved God. She looked past superficial. Are y'all hearing me? She looked past, oh, if he got a six pack or he tall or this one. No. And see what started to happen. She saw the call on his life and she saw his love for God. Ladies, I'm trying to tell you, don't you get so in your feelings or you start to act so much like a man that you start to look over the fact that here it is that watch this, that God made Eve. God formed Eve. God did not ask Adam's permission on what he wanted. He made Eve how he wanted. Oh, see, you missing what I'm trying to tell you. God has the man that's designed for you in his will, in his image. He has them picked out for you. You may not like him with the beer belly, but God said, go on, marry the boy. He is the man for you. When he gets with you, he going to get in shape because he loves you. That Oh, see, you keep looking past all this stuff. I don't want that man that mows my yard, but the man got money in the bank and you keep looking past him. God said, I sent the boy to mow your yard and now he's sitting right in front of you, but you don't like him because he's dirty. Come on. Come on, ladies. You can't go by what you look. I want him six, two and a half, Pastor D. 210 pounds. I want him to look like Will Smith, but I want him ears to be that big. Six pack. I want to be able to wash my clothes off his stomach. Uh, yeah, come on. Yeah, I know it. I want to be able to do that, Pastor D. I want to have washboard. I can. Well, you know what, baby? You know, our washing machine is broken. That's okay. You can just use my abs. No, y'all stop this foolishness, okay? Maybe God has something different, Pastor D. I don't want no bald headed man. Boo, you don't know. Bald headed man might be a billionaire. OK, so stop saying what I want. Say, God, in your perfect will, show me what it is that I need to desire. Show me what it is that I need to want. God, show me who I need to be ready for and fit. And see, don't you keep saying, Lord, send me this. Oh, Lord, I want to be perfect and he needs to be perfect this way. No, what you say, Lord, send me the man and woman that fits me. Did you hear me? OK. That fits me. Yeah, they need to have some tea, boo, now. Come on. Hold up, God. We ain't going to go that far. I ain't number 28 years old, Lord. 35 years old, 40 years old. God, he needs, needs to have some tea, God. Give him some Yeah, okay. Now, I do agree. He will give you some tea. So check this out. So what does the word say, okay, about some guidelines for some relationships? And I'm going to get through these quickly. Give me 10 minutes. I'm done. Y'all stay with me 10 minutes. I'm done. But y'all, that's right, boo. He may not have no teeth, but you can buy him some in the name of Jesus touch him anyway. So firstly, what he needs to do, biblical guidelines, I'm going to give you all these and I'm going to go. Check this out. OK, he needs to be at the person or the person in your life. All right. When you're dating, you need to learn how to guard your heart. I'm talking about the power of selection. So before you go out there and make a decision, first of all, you need to be able to guard your heart. OK, the Bible tells you to be very careful about giving out your affections. OK, because your heart influences everything in your life. Be very careful. Please guard your heart. Be very careful. Well, Pastor D, uh, you know, we, we, we went out and, you know, after six months, I gave it up to him. I'm going to help you all because you don't like the truth. OK, let me tell you all something. Please hear me. Ministers, help me. Preachers, please. Just because you slept with them 
don't mean that you okay that you gotta fall in love with them. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, 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 okay, you did it. God bless y'all. You don't have no, that don't mean go fall in love because you messed up and made a mistake. And that don't mean because you had a child by him, go marry him. I know so many relationships because of that. And now the church has messed us. Oh no, the church messed y'all up big time, boo. I'm talking about back in the day when you were sleeping with somebody and had a baby by him, they made you get married. Y'all know how many of the divorces the church is responsible for? Okay? You made a mistake. Get yourself up, move on, and let's go on to the next day. Yeah, because it doesn't mean that you're supposed to be with him. Because a lot of times y'all don't understand, okay, people come in the model, come of spiritual fathers. Sometimes spiritual fathers get on my nerves, y'all. I ain't even finna lie to y'all. Everybody want to be a spiritual father. Boy, you've been preaching for two days and you want all your members to call you spiritual father. You want to call you dad? You ain't dad. They get on my nerve. Spiritual fathers, sometimes we put so much emphasis on spiritual fathers and spiritual coverings in that regard. And the word of God started with an earthly father to be a father to his household. Oh, oh I know that. I know. OK, shots fired at all. Y'all ain't calling all y'all dad. You everybody ain't need to be called no dad. Some of you, you need to get to the point where your members can call you dad. I got some of my members call me dad. But I listen, I don't make them do it because I'm not just trying to be that. Listen, I will not try to be a spiritual father to someone when I'm a public failure and a private failure in my own house. Uh-oh, because what happens, ladies and gents, God instituted the home first and the spiritual covering was him over Adam and Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm, yeah, I know y'all don't like that. Tell every spiritual father what I said, okay? Y'all trying to be a spiritual father and you can't even keep your house together, but you're, doing, you're more successful at your church than you are at your home. Anyway, I don't even know why I said that, but it's the truth, Okay? It's the truth. They need to understand that. But ladies, guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart before we watch this, y'all. It's the wellspring of life. Proverbs 4 and 23. And secondly, you are known by the company you keep. Mm -mm. Bad company corrupts good manner. First Corinthians 15, 33. Uh, yes, you also tend to be like the company you keep. Let me tell you something. If you assimilate and hang around bad company, you are bad company. It's just that simple. If you see me hanging around a bunch of guys, okay, and uh, they're known to be homosexual guys, and I keep telling y'all they my dudes, but I ain't that way, y'all ain't gonna believe me. Why would you believe me? You are known by the company that you keep. If you're a bunch of, a bunch of liars and adulterers and fornicators, you are known by the company that you keep. So sometimes y'all need to understand some of the company that you keep is not good company. Thirdly, here it is, Christians... You are Christians should only date other Christians. OK, because I believe this now. If you say people think you're funny acting. No, you're not funny acting, boo. I promise you, you are in the season now <coughs> where you're not so diddy. You are spiritual. And people need to understand there are times in your life where you shouldn't be chuckling all the time. There are some times in your life where you get so vexed at the enemy, where you are serious, where you refuse to let anybody come around you. That's why selection is great, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody should not have the opportunity to even walk up to you and ask you for your number. Everybody should not have the mitigated goal to walk up to you or to come up to you or to come to your house or to walk across your threshold to be around your kids you have to be very selective about the very people that you even let ride in your car come on ladies gentlemen y'all need to hear this okay you need to understand that spirits are very real you ever realize that sometimes when you let your children go to certain people's house they come back acting crazy they come back acting foolish and I didn't understand it when I was a little boy, but my mom said, I said, I want to go over such and such house. My mom said, you ain't going over there. Why can't I go over there? Because I said, so I didn't understand at the time. But when I got older, I started to understand. You need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, on here today, the power selection is so great that everybody cannot frequent you. And I want to say this to everybody on here. Y'all want to know why? Everybody cannot handle your flaws. Okay. Mm. So is this man that you're dating Oh, I'm giving y'all good knowledge tonight. Is this man that you're dating strong enough to encourage you and lift you up and pick you up and help you get out the mark, the mar, the clay, the mud, whatever you got yourself in together? Is he strong enough to help you get past what y'all did together? Uh oh, I know y'all. Oh, yes. Yeah, see, did y'all hear what I just said? Let me say it one more time in another way. Is he strong enough? To get back up and help you recover 
from a mistake that you have made. Oh, see, that's why it's important. You slept with him. You were with him. Come on, ladies. Is he strong enough to say, you know what? We can't do that. We got to I got to guard your heart. I got to guard and protect you. I got to make sure that people don't look at you like a hoe in the street based on what I'm doing. I can't get you pregnant. You got an anointing over your life. Oh, see, you, you better protect yourself. Everybody cannot handle your flaws. I think I just blessed y'all better than y'all responding. Everybody cannot handle your errors and your mistakes. Everybody, let me bless y'all. That's why you can't share everything with everybody, ladies and gentlemen, on here today, because there are some people who are looking for you to fail. They are looking to expose you. That's why, ladies, you can't sleep with everybody because the enemy wants to kill you and the enemy wants to take you out because he wants to expose you through him. OK, through other men. That's his job. That's why you can't talk to everybody. That's why when you are in this process of selection, I know he chooses you, but you have a choice into, you know, into selected as well. That's why when you are with this person, if there's an error, is he strong enough? Are you strong enough to move on? That's why when you are with somebody, you need to be with the man of God that's stronger than you. That's why I'm trying to tell y'all ladies something. That's why you can't be with a man that knows two scriptures. You are dating this man. God has called you to be an evangelist or a prophet or whatever he's called you to be. All right, a prophetess. And you're with this man. He knows no word. And now you can't get up and hold your head up high in church because you slept with him on Saturday night. But God's called you to be a minister. You show up on Sunday. You can't even lift your hand because you are shameful because you have fallen to the enemy. Oh, see, I know that's kind of tough to swallow. I know it's tough to swallow, my friend. And I see what you're saying, but you can't be the stronger one. The man has to be the stronger one. Did y'all hear me? Oh, a thief. I like that, my friend. Oh, my God. He needs to be stronger than you. And see, that's why, ladies, men, I always encourage believers, date somebody that's as strong as you. So even if you mess up, you're going to get up together. And that's why. I am so envy or, or so vexed at preachers that prey on new converts. I know y'all don't like this, but I'm going to be truthful as I can when I tell y'all this. That's why I got a problem with philander and preachers coming to town and they sleeping with new members that just got in Christ and they mess them up for the rest of their life and they never come back. Are y'all hearing me on tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, whoever's on here, y'all need to block. If y'all block them enough, Periscope will block them off here for me. So y'all handle the people up here and y'all block them for me. That's why I got a problem. And I know this ain't scriptural. This just Pastor Deism. Hear what I'm about to say. I got a problem. And I tell preachers all the time, if you're going to go do your dirt and you're going to just be out there and you're doing your thing, God dog it, then don't you mess with them young converts that walk into your church because they'll leave your church and they'll never come to Christ another day in their life. At least if you're going to do your dirt, God dog it, go and do your dirt out there with somebody that got some strength that's been in this thing 10, 15 years, they can come look at you and say, let's stuff over with and move on. And listen, we're not giving you a, a, a caveat or giving you out to be that way. What I'm saying is this. Don't you mess up and pray on these. Oh, come on now. That's as truthful as I can get. It ticks me off when I see it. I can't stand it. Okay. And I know a lot of preachers. No, no, no. Listen, if, you, if I'm going to do that, then God, it better be somebody that's super strong with me that can say, you know what, Pastor, we screw, let's get on. Let's pray and get this off of us. Let's move on. Secondly, selection is so good in this regard. I don't took the pastor head. Now, y'all hear what I'm about to say. You better be with somebody that got as much to lose as you do. Uh oh, uh oh, uh -oh. did y'all hear what I just said? They got as much to lose as you do. That's how you're going to start to set the tone. Wait a second. I got a Ph.D. and this brother here, he ain't even graduated from high school. If I mess up and do something crazy with this brother, y'all got to start to listen. It, you're not, it, I'm not saying you're going to make a mistake. Y'all need to understand. All right. My friend God's cover girl has a thriving business where she does hair. OK, she can't be with anybody. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. Her father is a bishop. I ain't putting your business out there, my friend. Y'all know I love you. 
Okay, are y'all hearing me? She can't let anybody come around her. And first of all, I'm going to go somewhere because you go back to the order. This is going into my scope later this week, y'all. I'm going to say it, though. The order of natural selection, when you go through the Bible, the Bible shows you that people that had to or wanted to be married, they had to be chosen by the father, and the father had to approve who they dated and who they married. Y'all don't like that? I know y'all don't like that. See, y'all want to go away from the Bible. I ain't going to go all in there because I'm going to do this later this week but see you need to have somebody ladies and gentlemen in your life that if you date this man if you date this woman you can take them to him and say what you think about him right there what you think tell me and see you need to be strong enough to be able to handle the truth well girl why are you with him okay see my ladies know I got one of my good ladies, one of my one of my best members in my church. I'm going to be very clear when I say this to her. She was dating a guy. They brought him in my office. I said it in front of her. I said, I like him. He's a good guy. Notice what I said. He's a good guy. That's all I said. He's a good guy. Sit in the office, talk with him. Boom. He's a good guy. That's all I said. That's it. He's a good guy. I ain't say nothing else. I ain't say he was spiritual. I ain't say nothing. He is a, yes, my friend. I didn't say he was a godly guy. I say he's a good guy. A good guy. Yeah. See? And now, good men, right, Jaleesa and these, good men not going to cut it, y'all. They're not going to cut it for y'all. They are not going to cut it. Simple as that. A good man can't do it for you. Boo, I don't care how good looking he is. That's not going to cut it. I promise you. Your prices are too high. You need to cut it. Let's move on. Y'all need to cut some of these jokers out your life. Did y'all hear what I said? Okay. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Mm, yeah, whatever. All right. Y'all need to cut it. I'm telling you, the enemy's prices are too high. Y'all need to cut it. I'm serious. He trying to get you to sleep with him, boo. You need to cut it. It's simple, okay? He trying to mess your life up. You need to cut it. Okay, all right. I'm out to this one. I'm done. Christians should only date other Christians. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Is it really love? The next one. Here it is. I'm going to give you all some questions and I'm done. I'm going to do the rest of this week. First Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. First Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 defines real love. Here it is. Ask yourself these questions. Pastor D, is it real love? Power selection. Are you patient with each other? Hmm. Does he say something every time he says something? And don't cut it six months down the line. Cut it right away. Talk, my friend. He's someone who can pray with you in the very time, my friend. Y'all saying some good stuff, man. First Corinthians 4 and 7. Good scripture. That's right, my friend. For uh, 13. For First Corinthians 13, 4 and 7. Here it is. Are you patient with each other? Are you kind to each other? Are you never envious of each other? Hmm. That's a good one. Do you never boast to or about each other? Hmm. This is my second service today. Thank you, my friend. Is your relationship characterized by humility? I'm trying to read them so y'all can catch them. Are you never rude to each other? I'm talking about the process of dating. Are you never rude to each other? Hear me clearly. Are you not self-seeking? I don't say ladies to lady hear me on hear me on this one. If I if, if you were the man and it's all about him, baby, how I look, baby, how this is, baby, what about this? And he never encourages you. What? I can't. Ugh. I just did a feminine moment. I think ugh. I think that's what y'all do. I'm sorry. Trust me. all oh, man. Hear what I just said. Self-seeking. OK, self-seeking. Are you not easily angered with each other? I promise you, y'all need to understand. Yeah, he's arrogant. All right. Do you keep no record of wrongs? If you're dating before you get married, if you decide to stay with him, don't keep record of wrongs, lady. Y'all hold stuff up. Yes, you do. Ten years down the road, you still remember. You bring all that stuff up. But you can't keep records of wrongs. You can't do it. I know it. That's my friend. She type, uh oh, yeah, this hell. <laughs> I like that. D don't keep records of wrong. Are y'all hearing me? Okay. 
The next one is this. I got three more. I'm done. Are you truthful with each other? Truthful. Did y'all hear me? Are you truthful with each other? Does he tell you the truth? Do you tell him the truth? Ladies, I promise you, tell, tell, sign out the gate. If you're serious about this man, if he's serious about you, some of the things in your past you need to tell. Now, some things, maybe not, but some you should. You'd be very truthful. If you are still in love with your ex, boo, you need to tell this man you don't love him like that. Okay? Are you truthful with each other? The next one is this. Do you protect each other? One of the best things. Don't throw your wigs off, oh, oh, my friend. Watch this. One of the best things that y'all need to understand, ladies, a man, a godly man, a man in general, loves a woman that can keep his secrets. Did y'all hear me? That can keep his secrets and you're not telling all your girls about y'all business. And the issue with a lot of you, sometimes y'all don't get this. Y'all miss this. You listen, the coverage that you would need for a man is great. You need to cover it. You have no business sharing all your bedroom secrets with your girls. Uh-huh. You have no business sharing your man's frailties with your girls. Oh, he ain't about nothing. Some of y'all say he ain't about that. Yeah, y'all get the cussing and stuff. You have no business. I kid you not, ladies. You think some of your friends are interested in the fact where they want to help you. Some of your friends will get interested in the fact of trying to take your man because mm-hmm. some of you you got good men they take care of you they take care of the family they do everything they do all right whatever they ain't make you do car wheels in the bed boo that's why you should be that type of woman that nurturing type of woman or that woman that knows who she is boo to help him do what he need to do see that's your job so you sitting there complaining about it now boo make that man what you have you help make that joker are y'all serious are y'all hearing me it takes a very strong woman all right to be with a man of god because she understands her role And now she just doesn't give up easily. It takes a very strong man to be with a man, a man of God. And now she's not intimidated by other women. Mm -hmm. I'm blessing y'all. I'm telling y'all. It takes a very strong woman. Oh, y'all hear me, okay? Be truthful. Protect each other. Lastly, do you trust him? If you don't trust him, why are you with him? Especially you dating. Why are you with him if you don't trust him? Okay? You can't be one of those women... Uh, women that say, you know, uh, well, I know he just boys would be boys. No, nah, boo. You said the right thing. Boys would be boys. A real man is not going to do that to you. Okay. Let me say something. Do we have flaws? Yeah, I got plenty of them. Y'all do do. Yes. But to get in a marriage, married people jump here quickly. If you're married, if you're not, or you've been married or been divorced. Tell these people, tell these single people to slow their roll. Pump the brakes, boo. Y'all need to pump the brakes. Don't want to be married in your singleness. In your singleness, it's so much that you can do yourself. And Listen, you ain't got to put up with the snow in the night. <laughs> you ain't got to put up with this kid that ain't yours. <laughs> yeah, pump your brakes, boo. You ain't got to put up with his money issues and problems, stuff he brings to the table. You ain't got to put up with his family or her family. I'm talking about it. It's, it's, you are free, boo. Slow down. Just slow down. Turn your wheels, my friends. I like that. You And y'all don't. <laughs> I'm going to say it. All the single people try and get married. <laughs> All the married people try and get single. Come on. Slow down. And if you've been married before, slow down. You are not. Oh, trust me. I got a lot of people must have church. They're not, they've been married before. They say, Pastor D, I don't think I'll ever get married again. Okay? And I, I get it. I mean, marriage is tough work when you're trying to do it the right way. But marriage, I promise you, I'm done. Churches have churches polluted our minds, though. Because ladies on here, I know some of you, and I, know some, I don't know all your issues, but I know some are divorced. And a lot of you ladies stuck it out so long for the simple fact because you you was holding on to the church face. Did I just tell the truth to somebody? You were holding on to the church face. You were holding on to the fact that now I've been married and mama done stayed married for 70 years. I got to make this work. 
which means I got to put up with some of this stuff and you'll set yourself up for failure because you'll know some of the things. Come on, this is the truth, y'all. You'll set yourself up for failure for some of the things that they do. You'll look at it and know what's going on and you'll keep trying to make it work because they'll keep coming to you and saying, oh, I'm sorry. I set, set myself free, my friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Forgive me. It is, it is it's, it's appalling to me when I see some some of you beautiful women. I don't know how some I don't know. I don't know what some of the guys y'all was with. I go like, what do what guy was that dumb to mess over her? And because you guys are some beautiful women of God. But it happens. It's tough, ladies and gentlemen. OK, it's a tough pill to swallow, giving your all to somebody and they betray you. OK, it's a tough thing to do. It's a tough thing to handle. But the word of God, you know, does not just get and see we mess up with just sexual sins. Let me tell you all something. If a man abandons you and leave you and your children to fend for yourself, he's abandoning you by the word of God. Don't y'all sit back and say the word of God say I can't do divorce in this. See, we so silly when it comes to the word of God. It's a whole lot of caveats that the word means when you really go back and research it. OK, if a man leaves you for yourself and he don't left you for a year or two and you're sitting there talking about, oh, well, the word say I can't remarry. Boo, he left you. Move on. OK, move on. What I can't do, boo. If God going to give you grace for sleeping with somebody before you was married and he, he let you stay alone and get it right. You don't think God can give you grace if you got a divorce? Say my grace is sufficient. And y'all sit there in the church. The church, man, I'm a pastor now. And I, I, I got members now that say, Pastor D, I love you. Why y'all love me? Because I did not have no idea that I could love God and have a life. Yeah, don't abuse God's grace right there. That's right, my friend. And they said, I, I had no idea that I could love God and have a life. And they laughed. For two weeks, I canceled Wednesday night service for the last two weeks at my church. They having a fit. You can't. Yeah. Enjoy your family. <coughs> See y'all Sunday. And they flip out. Are y'all hearing me? And see, then when you become free of it and then God frees you, you sit back and go like, man, I was bound. I was bound by this man. Don't get mad because your child looks like him. Because <laughs> some of y'all children look just like your ex. Just look at the kids and say, Lord, baby, you pretty. But like, oh, she looked like her daddy. Don't hit him. Just mm, don't, have a, don't have one of the moments. Where, mm, yeah. Okay. So, but I want to say that again, for real, ladies and gentlemen, for real, y'all need to understand now, the word of God frees you, and today, some of y'all need to be free, some of y'all need to move on, yeah, you made the wrong choice, the wrong selection, but I'm going to ask you a question, married people that's still on here, because some of y'all, you're purporting to be in something that you know was not God-ordained, you hanging in there, hmm, here's the question, here's a critical question, I'm done. What do you do when you marry a person for pleasure and they bring you pain? Good question. What do you do when you hook up with somebody that you thought was going to bring you pleasure and they bring you pain? That's what y'all understand. What happens? Because I can go back. And I can go way back to research Joseph when he married a lady called Asenath. She was the daughter of Potiphar. OK, Potiphar. All right. Was the brother or the cousin of Potiphar. So here it is. He goes back and marries somebody that reminded him of his pain. I'm gone, Periscope. That was too deep for some of y'all. I ain't going to go into that. I, I know Joseph like the back of my hand. Did y'all hear what I just said? Sometimes when God delivers you, you make mistakes and you go back not to the same person. You go back to somebody that reminded you of this person. Mm. I'm out. Don't mess up. Don't make that mistake. You went back to something that reminded you. You got delivered from the pain. 
but he has the same characteristics of your ex. Oh, we. Are y'all hearing me? And then, couple that, he goes and have two sons by this lady that are twins. So now, through pain, he bears children. So he's stuck. See, y'all think y'all got drama, pain. I ain't going to go there. I preach that all day. I love Joseph. I, I did a six-week series on Joseph. What happens, though? So today, I want to say some of you are married, but y'all don't even sleep in the same bed. I've been on here too long. I got to go. Some of y'all in the same house, and y'all go to church, and y'all look good wearing y'all pastel green colors and y'all blue colors and turquoise. You got on blue heels, and he got on a blue suede jacket, whatever y'all got on. But when y'all get to the house, y'all don't even speak to each other. Okay? I'm believing God for deliverance. And I believe you should not be purporting. You love him, you love him. Ask yourself a question, and I'm not going to answer it. Ask yourself a question. Would God want you to stay in a situation for the rest of your life with a person that you don't even love? It's a good question to ask. Maybe I'll answer it for you one day. That's what you need to ask the question. I don't even love him, God. Why am I with him? So I'm going to stay with him 34, 30 more years to just make it. God, I'm going to stay with him, hear me clearly, for 30 more years. And I know he cheated on me with 15 other women. And I said I forgave him, but I really didn't forgive him. But I'm staying with him because the word said, stay with him. See? But God, we don't even have sex together. We don't even sleep together. I don't even kiss him. Is his grace sufficient in that area? Hmm. I know the answer. Y'all might want to go research it because I just said something to some married people on here. Yeah. Divorce is allowable under the Dutch, my friend. That was the question y'all got to ask yourself. You, y'all just making the Bible to be Disney Channel. Go and really start reading, researching, say, God, I'm with this man. I don't even like him. I don't even love him. I've been with him for 15 years. I can't stand him. What am I supposed to do, God? And then you go to preach and say, stay in there as a pastor. I don't pass off all my convictions to my members because I may say it's something that I want them to do personally. I need to stay biblically with it. But then some things I have to see where they're coming from. OK, um, and that's what you need to research and study these things. Does God want you to stay unhappy the rest of your life? Is unhappiness means for divorce? Ask those questions. I don't believe God wants you to stay unhappy. I'm going to answer that one to you. Okay? Yeah. Good good answer, my friend. Has to release it. And see, that's the thing. First of all, y'all need to get to the place in your life that, so God, you got to release me from this person or have this person release you. If y'all want to be a little rat, say, boo, go, go divorce me so I can be free. <laughs> I want to say something. Why would y'all stay with somebody the rest of your life and y'all don't even love each other? Because I got two kids. We got a car. We got a house. We got all this stuff. Why? Why would y'all do it? Y'all crazy. And then y'all looking across the fence and say, mm, he cute. You've already seen it in your mind. Mm-hmm. Why? You seen it in your mind already. You're looking across the fence. Okay. If he's not covering you, staying mad with him, it's defeating the purpose. That is true, Jaleesa. So, I'm just saying, single people, slow your slow your roll. Slow down. Because you get a little bit older. You was a size 6 when he married you, boo. You're a size 16 now. Gravity hits, stuff falls. Everybody ain't blessed to stay fine and cute the rest of their life. Some people are. I'm in the gym now with a busted knee trying to bust my tail to get back in shape, y'all. It ain't about superficial looks. But what I'm saying is this. Take care of yourself. Love yourself first. Okay? Before you decide to give yourself to somebody else. I'm done. Y'all get out of here. Stop using your children as excuses. Good one, my friend. Yeah, preach the Bible, not corner living. I love me. That's right. Yeah, men get chubby all the time, boo. But you know some ladies, though? I just want to be real when I say that. I'm glad you said that, my friend. God built y'all different, differently than men. And don't y'all try to change who you are. Because men, they trip if you gain five pounds. Girl, you can get a little bit fat. 
Boo, you had a beer belly ever since I married you. I ain't never said nothing about your stomach. Mm, that's how men are. He's built you, ladies. Y'all long suffering. Y'all deal with a whole lot. He, you guys can bore a lot of pain. We get bit by a mosquito and we have a fit. Y'all pushing babies out, and we have a, we we going crazy. I'm t- well, I promise you, I'm a man. I'm telling y'all, okay. If I get a hangnail, I'm having a fit. Take me to the ER. <laughs> I promise you, I'm joking, guys. I have a I have a I'm one of the few men. I got a high tolerance for pain. I can take pain. They shot me up when I broke toward my Achilles, and the doctor said, you're not even flinching. I said, it's fine. I'm, I'm tough. But, um, ladies, you're tough. So he got a beer belly. You still love him. He said, I love all of them. And then he looked at you, got nervous. Like, Boy, you crazy? Okay, bye, y'all. I'm done. I love your Periscope. You guys are beautiful. You guys are wonderful. I want to say this. If y'all get on Facebook, I've deleted probably 100 people today off my Facebook profile because I ain't had nothing to do for about 30 minutes. <laughs> Don't ask me why, whatever. And I deleted them. So if y'all want to go add me as a friend on my regular page, Detrius D. Lewis, L O U I S, and on my public figure page, Pastor D. Lewis, you can. But on my Detrius D. Lewis, if you want to go add me as a friend, you better go do it now. And I'll take them next 60, 80 slots that I deleted people off of and add you, Detrius D. L O U I S. Go add me on Facebook, you will. Okay? And I promise you, I'm going to add you within a few minutes of you doing it today. Thank you, my friend. I'm trying to be real. I'm going to do this whole series this week. It's going to get a little deeper. And I'm going to show y'all some differences because um, I'm going to dig in this one so I can bless you better than I've been doing on some things. Um, for those that register for my conference, my uh, conference with R.C. Blakes, um, Bishop R.C. Blakes, Bishop R.C. Blakes, never, ever, ever disrespect his name, Bishop R.C. Blakes. Um, the site is up where you will get the download and you will get the password this week. And all you have to do, go in, log in your password, pull up the MP4, um, videos, save them to your phone. Now, if you got a Nokia i 578 flip phone, boo, I don't know if it's going to work in your flip phone, but if you got something a little bit new school, I'm thinking it's going to work in your new, your, your smartphone. But if you got a Nokia 777 series, Boo, I don't even think they make that phone no more. So, just saying. So, that site will come to you. You'll get the link in your email, what to do, and the instructions, okay? But y'all go at me on Facebook. I'm about to watch the game. I holler at y'all, all right? Instagram, Pastor D. Lewis. Go at me. I need y'all to add me. Periscope, follow me. Twitter, Pastor D. Lewis. You guys go at me. You want me to put this on YouTube? If you want me to put it on your niece, I'll put it on there for you. Um, I'll load it in a few minutes if you want. I'll load it now. Lieutenant A, man, I didn't know you was on here. Cavs, I'm going to say this. I'm a Kobe fan. Kobe Bryant. Yes, Kobe Bean Bryant. Been a Kobe fan my whole life. But I'm cheering for LeBron James tonight. I and mean, I ain't never thought I'd say that in my life. Y'all know why? Because the Golden State Warriors have disrespected the basketball gods. Let me say it like that. They should have been won this series, and now it's at seven games. And now I have turned on them. I want LeBron to win tonight. I'm going to tell all y'all. I want LeBron to win this thing. I don't want him to lose another final. LeBron has won my respect, and it takes a lot, guys. Y'all don't know, I was a high school All-American in basketball when I played ball. I had college scholarships, all that stuff. So I know the game a little bit. And one of my degrees of uh, uh, mine is in sports marketing, sports management, and coaching. Y'all didn't know that, did y'all? Okay, whatever. And so, I'm cheering for LeBron tonight. Now, uh, the, oh, my friend, my cousin, my, my cousin, coach. See that? See? See? I turn. I'm sorry. I'm cheering for LeBron tonight. LeBron won me over the last two games, y'all. I knew the boy could play. You got to respect the game. The boy, the boy, the boy's a bad man. I can't even say nothing against the brother. The brother, when he hit that jump shot, you can't stop the brother. He going to have to have 50 tonight for him to win, though, because that boy named Steph Curry, that boy went to church today. That boy done got prayed up, and he said, the other night, I'm like, I got to have the game of my life. So I'm just saying, I don't know. I think Jesus liked that boy a little bit more. He be taking his balls and just curving them in the basket. I'm just saying. <laughs> so I might get back on here later. We'll talk about the game. I'm just saying. So anyway, bye, y'all. I love y'all. We're going to watch the game. Y'all send me some messages on Facebook. I respond. Let's talk during the game. Pastor D, what you doing? I mean, you know I'm watching this game. All right. That's what my son wants to go into when he graduates. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the game. I know y'all watching it, too. Don't y'all act like y'all all super say it's okay to watch basketball.
Y'all too spiritual for me, man. Y'all deep, man. Y'all gotta stop being so deep. You can't add me uh, on Facebook? Yeah. Oh, yes, you can, my friend. Get on there and add me. I promise you I got about 80, 90 free spots. Uh, Pastor Eddie, go and add me as a friend, too, because I, I, I need you to be a friend, not a follower. <laughs> so add me, too. Okay, you on there. All right. It should let you, my friend. Send me an inbox, and I'll, I'll add you. But go to Facebook quickly. Uh, y'all can't. No, 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 no. If you already follow me, you're fine. But if you if you never added me as a friend, I got about 80 free spots. I promise you. Um, and you go look. Y'all go look. I deleted about 80 people today. So you can go Instagram. Y'all can add me on there as well. So try me. If you can't do it, send me an inbox. I'll add you as a friend. Okay. I love y'all Periscope. Y'all are beautiful. Y'all have a good one. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about your team, LeBron. Now, yeah, I'm cutting up, my friend. So y'all have a good one. I'll talk to y'all. Hope I didn't delete. Oh, no way, God's cover girl. No, matter of fact. I almost sent you a message the other day, but I was, but you got on here, so I ain't gonna mess with you. I'm gonna see your dad in message. Say, say, Bishop, she don't even get on my press scopes no more or nothing. She don't get on nothing I do. Pray for her. I'm playing. Bye, y'all. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Now you bound yourself to this man for the rest of your life and you upset because he was a deadbeat when you slept with him. But you were so emotional. So emotional. Oh, y'all hear me? So emotional. And you thought, okay, I'm going to have a kid. Don't y'all get quiet on me now. I know, okay, I'm going to do this. Oh, it's going to work out. Everybody told you he was crazy and he was no good, but you tried to make it work. You can't do that, ladies and gents, okay? And that's what you have to understand. I'm trying to get y'all to the point of your life where you understand the purpose and the positivity of selection, okay? It never puts you in a place, ladies, where if this man says God has given you or giving you to him, and he says he's that find a wife. Let me tell you, ladies, I want to bless you. You should be so prayed up that if any joker walks into your face, I believe you should know if he's truthful. How many of y'all? Let's park your parenthetic. Let me ask you a question. How many of you on here, ladies, that can say, Pastor, I heard that before. How many preachers, moonlighting preachers, done went through town and told y'all you was his wife? How many preachers, how many men of God done said, come on, ladies, now, that say, oh, God done told me you my wife? Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. God's cover girl, my friend, beautiful lady. I know she done heard it a thousand times. And she be looking like, whatever. I know you done heard it. I know you ladies. Yes, I know it. You, and y'all y'all probably get tired of it. Man, get out of my inbox. <laughs> Golly. Man, come on. Man, look. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And see, yeah, that's my friend. She said she's always like bad boys. And that happens. Angela, you a minister, a preacher. You see what I'm saying? And see, I know it. And then let me help you, ladies. I'm going to say this powerful selection is very, very great. Don't you let those emotional anointed moments trick your mind. Mm. What you talking about, Pastor D? Let me tell you this. I'm a pastor. I ain't the worst looking pastor on the planet. I ain't blind. So I ain't even finna lie to y'all. All right. Whatever. Y'all ain't bad looking yourselves. OK. Don't, OK. But hear me clearly. I go preach plenty of places. I'm in front of people. God moves. Hear me clearly. Y'all are too. God moves. God speaks. And see, we'll take those emotional moments and those anointed moments, those ecclesiastical moments, those mountaintop high moments. And what it'll do now, ladies and gentlemen, the anointing that God had placed on you and put on you is attractive. Can I back that thing up again? All right. Talk to you, Lisa. I see you. It happens. A lot of times, ladies, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm going to bless y'all. Power selection is very, very, very vital to your life. I ain't going to lie to you, ladies. I, them girls go do whatever they want to do in the street. But when I saw a pretty lady praising Jesus Christ, I was sitting there like, Lord Jesus. Ooh, girl, shout. Ah, hey. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all know it's the truth. Oh, she pretty. And she, oh, oh. Yeah, see, y'all don't see, y'all doing the wrong thing. See, a godly man, he wants a woman that can mess up her makeup every now and then. Y'all not saying, no, 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 no. He don't want you cute all the time. A real godly man, especially a man that's anointed, that got a call on his night. Oh, that's right. She pretty and she can pray. What? What? She pretty and she can sing? And see, you'll get those emotional moments. I'm serious, ladies and gentlemen. And you've seen them, yeah. Pretty with power. Yes. Yes, my friend. Pretty praiser. Yes. Yes. 
and you see that Angela pretty and then Angela is my friend, y'all. Angela ain't trying to get you no date, but I'm just talking. I'm just saying. And then you wrote a book. She's smart. And she anointed. Hear me clearly. And then you'll start to see the anointing over their life. And I promise you, ladies, what will happen with some of you. Hear me clearly, because some of y'all finna throw you wig. I've had friends, and I've seen this for myself. One of my good friends did not like this man that she was dating for the longest. She wouldn't even go out with him. She saw how much that boy loved God. She saw how much that boy put God before her. When she turned down his advancements, he never left the church. He stayed there. He became a minister. I talked to her a couple years after. She said, I don't know what happened. She said, I'm feeling over this boy because he loved God. She looked past superficial. Are y'all hearing me? She looked past, oh, if he got a six pack or he taller, this would no. And see what started to happen. She saw the call on his life and she saw his love for God. Ladies, I'm trying to tell you, don't you get so in your feelings or you start to act so much like a man that you start to look over the fact that here it is that watch this, that God made Eve. God formed Eve. God did not ask Adam's permission on what he wanted. He made Eve how he want. Oh, see, you missing what I'm trying to tell you. God has the man that's designed for you in his will, in his image. He has them picked out for you. You may not like him with the beer belly, but God said, go on, marry the boy. He is the man for you. When he gets with you, he going to get in shape because he loves you. That old oh, see, you keep looking past all this stuff. I don't want that man that mows my yard, but the man got money in the bank and you keep. Periscope, bro. How's everybody doing? What's up, Periscope? Happy Father's Day to every man. Happy Mother's Day 2017 to the rest of you mothers. But it's for fathers. How's everybody doing? Can everybody hear me clearly? Listen, y'all got me on a Sunday, so let's talk about it quickly. Good to see everybody. Thank you guys for all the well wishes. I don't think I've ever gotten this many Father's Day wishes ever in my life. So thank you. You guys are beautiful, kind. I got text messages, Facebook messages, and oh, wow, across the board. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, each and I'm serious. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's been, thank you. So, <coughs> how's everybody doing? You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Look at all those happy Father's Day. Y'all know it's amazing that it's Father's Day. Can y'all tell me why every year for Father's Day my kids end up getting more stuff than me? Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Help me. Help me. I say I can't wait till y'all get older. It's the funniest thing. <laughs> I, I end up going out to the stores, ladies and gentlemen, and they call themselves going with me and I end up buying them stuff. It'd be so funny. It happens every year. I took them to the boys. I wouldn't let them buy me anything yesterday. And I'm down there buying them anything they want. That's crazy, guys. That is so funny. <laughs> they, I, I wouldn't buy them a pool, you know, because I'm going to build a house next year. And I bought them a pool so they can get in the water. So they're out there in the water. It's crazy. I mean, um, did I get another tie? Yes, I got plenty. Yes, yeah, about the kids. I, I got plenty of ties. I didn't even need ties. I got a box. I got, uh, I got a lot of stuff, guys. That's what I'm building my house next year. Uh, but yeah, I got a couple of ties and this and that. And so, y'all yeah, pray for my son. Uh, my son needs Jesus. Uh, but yeah, it's the joy of being a father. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. God bless you, my friend. 
I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. I, I, I feel this way and I feel this way strongly. I feel that my life is a failure if my, if my kids are failures. I feel that way. My life is not about me. It's about my kids and my family. And I will be a failure if my kids are raised to be failures. I feel like now my father set the tone for me to be a, a great man of God. I need to follow. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I need to follow in his footsteps. Then my son needs to be able to stand on my shoulders to see father and do better than I am or be a better man than I am. But I need to set the tone and make it hard for him. Make it hard for him where he has something to strive and reach for that he can reach. OK. And I believe that I want my son to be better than me. So that's why I'm, I'm talking about this today. I want to say something to you um, again. First time as if you're on for the first time type of one. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about today. I've been reading some for the last three days and I want to share some insight. I'm not going to be long because it's going to take me a little while to go through everything. Thank you for first timers for being on the rest of you. If you don't know how to share, you can share. No Facebook Live, just in, um, just Periscope tonight because I started with Periscope. Started from the bottom. Now we're here and I'm riding with Periscope. Newcomers, bless you. Thank you for coming in again. Android, swipe up, hit share. Face, uh, what is it? not Facebook, uh, iOS operators, left to right. Again, you can hit share. Some of you share it to Facebook, share it to Twitter. I do actually go back and look at my Twitter messages as well. If you get locked out of the room, if you want to talk to me on, on Twitter, all you have to do is hit share to Twitter. If you're locked out the room, type in a comment. It goes straight to my wall. I'm trying to teach y'all some Periscope tricks. If you want to go and do a screenshot, swipe your phone like you do a regular screenshot, you will get my picture. But don't y'all be using my picture on fake profiles. I'm going to get you. Don't do that. A couple people know me these days, so don't, don't do that. All right? Don't be putting y'all, don't be putting my picture in y'all phone. Hey, Angela, talking about this is my new boo. No, don't y'all be doing it now. I need y'all to stop those shenanigans now. Y'all be surprised. Talking about you need cute. Ooh. Somebody going to look in your phone and say, that look like Pastor D. That is Pastor D. Don't y'all do that. Y'all saw all these fake profiles going up. So let's talk about it. Importance of selection. The importance of selection. The, port the importance of selection and the importance of selection, I guess, as far as a godly mate. I'm not going to be long, I promise you, because um, I'm going to do this. I, I, one of my scopes I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to show you biblical dating. And biblical principles versus worldly principles as far as come to the under you or to you in the modicum of this way. It's going to say, hey, God told me. Did y'all catch me? Quotation. God told me that you was going to be my wife. Did y'all hear me? God said. Well, boo, I'll be praying, too. I ain't seen God. I don't even know you. <laughs> I just say, I, let me tell you something, boo. Just because I like your picture on Instagram don't mean I want you. Just because I like your picture on Facebook don't mean I want you. Just because I said you look cute and there was a nice you know, get up that you had on. All I really was saying is you look better than what you had on for Easter Sunday when you wore that pastel color suit. That's all I really was trying to tell you. I wasn't trying to. Get, oh, see, y'all not saying nothing. I mean, that's what men would do, ladies. I promise you. They'll try to get you in your emotions. And when you get in your emotions, you'll go so far in your emotions, you'll talk yourself into a relationship that never should exist because emotions fluctuate. They will change. You'll be happy. You'll be sad. Just like scripturally, some days you're happy, some days you're not. Some days you think God's going to do it. Other days you don't think he is because emotions fluctuate. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this, y'all, because emotions are in the soulish realms, okay? And unless the carnal man has been renewed, Satan can give us emotions of feeling of love for someone of his choosing. Let me back it up because I'm about to tell y'all something. Satan can give us emotions or feelings of love for someone of his choosing. Thank y'all for following me because I'm going to bless y'all to tell y'all this. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The word of God tells you in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Y'all read Bible before. It says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Boom. Colon. Colon. Which means, hold up, that ain't it. Because I got to tell y'all something else. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? This is the word of God. All right. And then he says, question mark. Why are you hanging around unrighteousness? And then he says, what communion does the light have with darkness? Ladies and gentlemen, question mark. So now here it is. Great decisions start when you are with the man or with the woman that loves God. 
If they don't love God, if they have no relationship with God, then there should be no consideration for this person. Plain and simple. See that you have nothing in common. Well, Pastor D, he got saved yesterday. Boo, that ain't good enough. He needs to be, he need, and this ain't a word. He need to be saver than you. He he need to be a little more spiritual inclined, inclined and spiritually mature than you. Pastor D, he just he just went to church with me yesterday. We was been dating for him. I'm boo. It ain't time for y'all to be talking about getting married. Okay? Y'all need to understand sometimes. Now, it took you 10 years to slide. Okay, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna I'm gonna say it. It took you 10 years to stop sleeping around, boo. So how you think this man got everything washed and purged out of him in two days? How do you think this man got delivered in a week? How do you think this man come on? And so y'all need to understand, ladies, you better stop getting in your emotions because you don't want to be the bridesmaid. You want to be the bride. And then you make a mistake and walk down the aisle with, with somebody that is not purpose for your destiny. Because let me give y'all a shout, ladies and gentlemen. If you go back to Genesis 1, 2, 3, when he talks about Adam and Eve, catch the shout. It's very simple. Y'all miss simple things. God chose Adam's wife. Uh-oh. I'm going to let that marinate for about a second, see if y'all catch it. I don't know if y'all really ca caught what I just said. Uh, God chose the wife. Uh, yeah, uh, he even chose his own wife. God did it. Did y'all catch me? He didn't even choose his own spouse. And that's the problem. Sometimes you get so emotional and get in your feelings. You'll start talking to yourself into something that God has already talked you out of. And see if something on the inside of you where it feels like God is silent and God is not responding like you think he should be responding. Then that's your answer. I get this question all the time. Pastor D, I don't feel like this is the one for me because God appears silent. Boo, he's silent because he ain't got nothing to say. What, what you want him to give you some positive um, inflection in his voice? You want him to go strike the, you know, lighten it down. You want him to open the heavens, and you want him to come down with a choir and a mass choir talking about a, no. And God's silent because he's already given you his answer. And a lot of times, like my father would tell me, "Rest in peace, Dad." I know you hear me right now. Dad would always say, "D, why are you praying for something that you already know God has already given you the answer to?" I know y'all don't like that. Why are you praying? You already know this man is not for you, ladies. Me and you already know she's fine. She can't spell her name. She don't even know Jesus. She don't know. She can't even spell Jesus. She spelled her name J-E-S-S-E. -S -S -E. And you sit there and say, she cute. Okay, whatever. All right? And you know this man don't love God. He just loves your curves. And you're trying to put yourself in a situation. And when you do that, ladies and gentlemen, what you do now, you are held to the consequences of your actions. And what you start to do now, you try to make God invalidate who he is in his word. And you try to make God not be sovereign enough to tell you no. Or you try to take God and you try to make God not omniscient or omnipotent. And not you try to take his power from him. And that's what you don't understand. When you do your own thing, you remove yourself from the power. Okay. The anointing, the covering that God has for you. He sits there and look at you and say, yeah, you got grace, but you're going to be held to the consequences of your actions because now you dated the wrong man. You slept with the wrong man. You had a baby by the wrong man. Dating and, and being with a mate. I'm going to show you what the world expects and I'm going to show you what the Bible expects. I just want to share some insights to a lot of things that I say to you. But this one here is just kind of impromptu of, of some of the things I want to share tonight. Again, I'm Pastor D. I'm the Unity Worship Center. I'm Senior Pastor, Founder. Again, happy Father's Day. I'm Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah. Go to unitywc.com. Register. Real Talk Kim is coming here July 15th. You should be in the place. But check me out. Check me out. I want to talk about this quickly, okay? All right. Question marriages and choosing a mate. It is very important uh, of how you choose a mate. The second most major decision that you're going to ever make is choosing a mate. Um, I missed that question, my friend. It's choosing a mate and being with the right person. Obviously, the first one um, is going to be accepting Christ as your Lord and personal Savior for salvation. The second most major and critical decision is choosing a mate. I want to say something out to the gate, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all need to understand. If you go to 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, it's a beautiful definition of real love. I can't read it all. It's so long. But it starts this way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, 
and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Read the word. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffered long and is kind. Charity envied not. Charity valued not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. Think it no evil. Charity. You know charity means love. Most of y'all been to Sunday School 101. It means love. But it's a good definition. Go through it. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. It's a great model definition of what real love is. Most of us on here today can testify that because of some of the choices that you made, because of some of the choices that you did or, 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 or the, did yourself in your own life, you made some bad choices. Yes, you did, ladies, men. You 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 was with, you were with this guy because of whatever reason you like this guy for this you dated this guy for this come on let's be real on here most people are real on my scope and so what you need to understand something ladies and gents is this men's emotional or, or men's emotional or emotions are not a reliable gauge okay when it comes to establishing something in a marriage relationship you need to understand emotions will get you out of whack hello my friends might say hey dad emotions will get me out of get you out of whack emotions will mess you up if you do stuff in your feelings um you're gonna always be at a point in your life where you're gonna always regret a lot of things that you do okay and i kid you not Yes, she asked, how can you forget? You just got to ask God to give you strength enough to move on. And first of all, learn how to forgive yourself. Hear this clearly, ladies and gentlemen. You must know now, watch this, y'all, in the spirit, it is God's will, but it is much better to marry for character than emotion. Let me back that thing up. Y'all missed what I just said. <clears throat> okay, it is better to marry for character and not emotional. Y'all might want to tag yourself on the wall and hear me clearly when I say that again. You should never be with someone because you are emotional. Emotions will say, he is my first love. She's my first love. I'm going to stick this out. This is the first person, let's be real about it, that I've ever had sex with. And I slept with him. I got a kid by this person. And now you are emotion or emotional. And see, you don't understand. You need to marry for character and not emotions. Watch this, y'all. You go to real talk moment of the day. I want to bless you when I tell you this. Emotions fluctuate. Characters don't. Uh oh. Emotions fluctuate. Character does not. Mm. Character says a whole lot about who this person really is instead of your emotions. Because let me help you ladies and tell you this now. You got some of these effeminate men. They will cry on your shoulder, boo, and tell you they love you. And they will get you so in your emotion. You're going to say, oh, he cried. Oh, he had a tear. Oh, I saw him do it, Pastor D. Yes, I did. And see, emotions will mess you up, ladies, because you are emotional. Again, emotions fluctuate. Character does not. See, character is going to show you who this person really is. And I promise you, you can never choose the right person. And I'm going somewhere with this. You say, he that finded a wife, find it a good thing and obtained a favor from God. I understand you know word of God. And I know you get that. But let me help you ladies. The word of God never tells you somewhere, nowhere, anywhere in scripture that you don't have a choice to say yes. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, boom, boom. Say, shake the room. Did y'all hear what I just said? The word of God never tells you that you don't have a choice in the matter. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? That you don't have a choice in the matter. You got to understand, ladies. He can walk up to you. I don't care who he is. Boo, he can. He, listen, he can speak in 16 native tongues. I'm talking about he can speak in tongues so good. I promise the hell will raise up on your head. I promise your wig will jump off your head. He can do it any. And I assure you there are some men that can. But now he walks up to you. And I want to tell you, ladies, there are a lot of men that are going to walk up to you because you have a spiritual relationship with God. And you're going to say, hey, you know, he's going to look at past him. God said, I sent the boy to mow your yard. And now he's sitting right in front of you. But you don't like him because he's dirty. Come on. Come on, ladies. You can't go by what you look. I want him six, two and a half, Pastor D, 210 pounds. I want him to look like Will Smith, but I want him ears to be that big. Six pack. I want to be able to wash my clothes off his stomach. Uh, yeah, come on, y'all, I know it. I want to be able to do that, Pastor D. I want to have washboard. I can, well, you know what, baby? You know, our washing machine is broken. That's okay. You can just use my abs. No, y'all stop this foolishness, okay? Maybe God has something different, Pastor D. I don't want no bald-headed man. 
Boo, you don't know. Bald headed man might be a billionaire. OK, so stop saying what I want. Say, God, in your perfect will, show me what it is that I need to desire. Show me what it is that I need to want. God, show me who I need to be ready for and fit. And see, don't you keep saying, Lord, send me this. Oh, Lord, I want to be perfect and he needs to be perfect this way. No, what you say, Lord, send me the man and woman that fits me. Did y'all hear me? OK, that fits me. Yeah, they need to have some tea, boo now. Come on. Hold up, God. We ain't going to go that far. I ain't number 28 years old, Lord. 35 years old, 40 years old. God, he needs to have some teeth, God. Give him some. Yeah, okay. Now, I do agree. He will give you some teeth. Check this out. So what does the word say, okay, about some guidelines for some relationships? And I'm going to get through these quickly. Give me 10 minutes. I'm done. Y'all stay with me. 10 minutes. I'm done. But y'all, that's right, boo. He might not have no teeth, but you can buy him some in the name of Jesus. Touch him anyway. So firstly, what he needs to do, biblical guidelines. I'm going to give you all these and I'm going to go. Check this out. OK, he needs to be at the person or the person in your life. All right. When you're dating, you need to learn how to guard your heart. I'm talking about the power of selection. So before you go out there and make a decision, first of all, you need to be able to guard your heart. OK, the Bible tells you to be very careful about giving out your affections. OK, because your heart influences everything in your life. Be very careful. Please guard your heart. Be very careful. Well, Pastor D, uh, you know, we, we, we went out and, you know, after six months, I gave it up to him. I'm going to help you all because you all don't like the truth. OK, let me tell you all something. Please hear me. Ministers, help me. Preachers, please. Just because you slept with them don't mean that you, okay, that you got to fall in love with them. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you, okay, you did it. God bless y'all. You don't have, no, that don't mean go fall in love because you messed up and made a mistake. It don't mean because you had a child by him, go marry him. I know so many relationships because of that. And now the church has messed us. Oh, now the church messed y'all up big time, boo. I'm talking about back in the day when you were sleeping with somebody and had a baby by him, they made you get married. Y'all know how many divorces the church is responsible for? Okay. You made a mistake. Get yourself up. Move on. And let's go on to the next day. Yeah, because it doesn't mean that you're supposed to be with him. Because a lot of times y'all don't understand. Okay, people come in the modicum of spiritual fathers. Sometimes spiritual fathers get on my nerves, y'all. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. Everybody want to be a spiritual father. Boy, you've been preaching for two days and you want all your members to call you spiritual father. You want to call you dad? You ain't dad. That gets on my nerve. Spiritual fathers, sometimes we put so much emphasis on spiritual fathers and spiritual coverings in that regard. And the word of God started with an earthly father to be a father to his household. Oh, oh I know that. I know. OK. Shots fired at all y'all. I ain't calling all y'all dad. You, everybody ain't need to be called no dad. Some of you, you need to get to the point where your members can call you dad. I got some of my members call me dad. But I, listen, I don't make them do it because I'm not just trying to be that. Listen, I will not try to be a spiritual father to someone. When I'm a public failure and a private failure in my own house. Uh oh, because what happens, ladies and gents, God instituted the home first and the spiritual covering was him over Adam and Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm, yeah, I know y'all don't like to tell every spiritual father what I said. OK, y'all trying to be a spiritual father and you can't even keep your house together. But you doing you more successful at your church than you are at your home. Anyway, I don't even know why I said that, but it's the truth. OK. It's the truth. They need to understand that. But ladies, guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart before we watch this, y'all. It's the wellspring of life. Proverbs 4 and 23. And secondly, you are known by the company you keep. Mm -mm. Bad company corrupts good manner. First Corinthians 15, 33. Uh, yes, you also tend to be like the company you keep. Let me tell you something. If you assimilate and hang around bad company, you are bad company. It's just that simple. If you see me hanging around a bunch of guys, OK, and uh, they're known to be homosexual guys. And I keep telling y'all they my dudes, but I ain't that way. Y'all ain't gonna believe me. Why would you believe me? You are known by the company that you keep. If you're a bunch of bun a bunch of liars and adulterers and fornicators, you are known by the company that you keep. So sometimes y'all need to understand some of the company that you keep is not good company. Thirdly, here it is. Christians. You are Christians should only date other Christians. 
Okay? Because I believe this now. Did you say people think you're funny acting? No, you're not funny acting, boo. I promise you, you are in the season now <coughs> where you're not sadiddy. You are spiritual. And people need to understand. There are times in your life where you shouldn't be chuckling all the time. There are some times in your life where you get so vexed at the enemy, where you are serious, where 